from WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm Ray Hollister. And I'm Tom Brown. And this is Deemable Tech, tech help worth listening to. This week's episode of the Deemable Tech podcast is brought to you by A Small Orange, homegrown hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting, on the web at asmallorange.com. And by audible.com. Deemable Tech listeners can get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash deemable. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And from All Florida Insurance Options, an authorized progressive agency helping people shop for insurance at 904-757-3288 or at their office in Highland Square on Den Avenue in North Jacksonville. Got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? Give us a call at 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email, questions at deemble.com. And let's see, our first question is from... Lydia. Can you read that one? Lydia. Yeah, I can. Uh, Lydia writes, what is a QR code? I saw somebody at the mall looking at a movie poster with a black and white square that looked techy. Techy. And they said something about a QR code. What is that? What is that, Ray? Oh, well, thanks for your question, Lydia. Actually, you described it pretty well. A QR code is a techy looking black and white square. Yeah, they, you, you've seen them. They kind of look like small crossword puzzles. And what they can do is pretty cool, though. Literally, the QR in QR code stands for quick response. And they actually start out in the mobile industry, automobile industry to help manufacturers keep track of parts. Hmm. So QR codes are similar to the barcodes or UPC symbols that you might see in a grocery store on the back of your canned beans. The difference is that a QR code, uh, a barcode is just one line of information. For instance, a UPC code is just a 6 or 12-digit number, usually. The numbers that you see at the bottom of the barcode are literally all the scanner reads. Barcodes are one-dimensional. They're left to right. But QR codes are two-dimensional. So they store information left to right and up and down. Right. So here's how that this would affect you or could affect you. QR codes have a lot of information stored in them, or they could have a lot of information stored in them, like website addresses, phone numbers, or other information. And you can read QR codes with a smartphone and a QR code reader app. And a lot of companies are starting to put QR codes on their posters and in their ads and magazines and billboards. So, for instance, let's say you're looking at an ad in a magazine for a product that you're interested in and you'd like more information about it. Instead of having to go and enter the website address in manually or having to like search the internet for it, you can just grab your phone, uh, open your QR code reader, and snap a picture of the code. And boom, you've got the link to their website and it opens right up to it. Uh, Most of the QR codes that I've seen uh, are usually just links to a website, but Mm -hmm. I've actually seen a couple that like real estate agents have that had their brochures, they they had a QR code on their brochures, and it had all of their contact number information. I'm saying things crazy, but it had like their phone number, their name, email address, and their website all in a note on my iPhone, so I didn't have to write any of that down. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, so QR codes have the potential to be really awesome, but they still face a lot of hurdles. And I think in my mind, the main hurdle that they face is people just don't know what they are. Or specifically, even if you do know what they are, you don't know how to read them. Right. Um, Which is too bad. It's actually fairly easy to do. Yeah. Although I wish that companies like Apple or Google would incorporate it directly into the phone to where all you had to do is open up your camera app or something like that. I don't even want to open an app. I want my camera to just be like, oh, there's a QR code. You want to look well, at, at least open the camera app. I mean, yeah. <laughs> not just start scanning things randomly. <laughs> I, I'd be okay with that yeah. with, with a certain level of intelligence. But it, go ahead. I was about to say, this, isn't it the Samsung Galaxy S4 that you just like lift the phone and it automatically pulls up the camera app? I don't know. That I think there's, cool. there's one of them that like it just figures out, oh, it must be taking a camera. A or picture? taking a picture. Can't be taking a camera. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Um, so to use a QR code, which I mentioned earlier, you have to have a QR code reader on your right. phone. Um, there's a lot of them. Uh, there's tons of them for iPhone and for Android. Mm-hmm. Um, the best one that I've found so far, I haven't really looked too hard, is QR Reader. Now, ironically, you mentioned that QR stands for quick response. That's the problem that I've had with QR code readers is they take a while to respond. Yeah. Oh. It actually takes a little while. But QR code, QR Reader, which that's one word, Q-R-R-E-A-D-E-R, that one's pretty fast. Um, Microsoft actually makes one called Microsoft Tag. And the Microsoft Tag app, which is available on practically all phones, uh huh, including iPhones, Androids, Windows Phone, Windows Mobile, the old the old Windows uh, operating system, even Symbian, BlackBerry, and uh, pretty much all dumb phones, you can download Microsoft Tag for. Um, in addition to reading QR codes, it also reads the other types of two dimensional codes like barcodes. 
and the one that Microsoft makes specifically called, appropriately, Microsoft Tag. That one looks like, uh, the best way I could describe it is little triangles of different colors on shelves. Huh. And you see them on some products and in, in, in magazines too, but it's specifically just by Microsoft. And it'll actually say Microsoft Tag on it. Okay. So... How about in the Android marketplace? Uh, well, same situation, really. There's numerous free apps in the Android Play Market that will like, read QR codes. I just go into uh, the the Play Market and search for a QR code reader. Yeah. And um, download the app of your choice. I picked one pretty much at random. It's called Scan QR Code Barcode by Scan Incorporated. And the one thing I'll say is it's actually really fast. Oh, cool. Like, it, it, it sees it, and yeah. bam, it pops it up. Cool. So I like that about it. Um, but yeah, there are there's a ton of apps, uh, and also Google Shopper and Google Goggles are supposed to read QR codes. Although we've noticed that Google Goggles yeah. tends to try and recognize the image you're looking at and will ignore the QR code. But that's yeah, we tried it on the iPhone and Android, and it yeah, was, it has sort of mixed results. Yeah, not not so great. But but that, that is worth mentioning though. I I use that all the time. Uh, Google Goggles. Yeah, the, it does do really good um, image recognition. If you're at a store and you're like, what's this product? And you whip out your phone and uh, pull up Google goggles like it can usually find an image of the product and relevant information like price comparisons yeah, stuff like that that's cool it's a little off topic but so yeah so QR codes uh, you know play with them have fun the reason I, I thought we should and talk you can about make it, your own yeah if, it, if you want to your own QR code yeah there's, oh, there's right. several websites if you yeah. if you have uh, let's say you want you know lost dog or you're having a yard sale next Friday you could actually or Saturday you could actually go to one of these websites and put in some QR code some information you would like to be encoded into the QR code and it could be just text it doesn't have to be a URL um, and yeah. you could generate and then print a working QR code that any phone will be able to scan and post it as part of your hey we're having a yard sale sign yeah um, there's a, the first one that came up for me looking for that was QR code for free.com. There you Make go. Some. So, yeah. uh, there's a lot of free, uh, QR code generators. So if you wanted to add one to your, if you want QR poster. codes in your life. And you were saying this morning, you saw someone who had a QR code on their shirt. Yes. Uh, they had a big QR code on the back of their shirt and they so allowed you to scan. Them. I had to scan them. It took forever though. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, okay, hold, hold, uh, hang on. Okay. I got to get this focused. Like, uh, and people, it was taking I, a picture. I mean, yeah. I have to focus. And I've, I've heard, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's someone out there with a QR code tattoo. If you're wearing a QR code, I'm going to scan you. So <laughs> don't wear a QR code unless you want people to scan you. I think that anybody who's going to get a QR code tattooed on their body, they probably are okay with that. Yeah, I would hope so. Yeah. But yeah, I, I've noticed a lot of people uh, or a lot of uh, QR codes around town recently here in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot more. I, you know, we talked about this all, almost a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a similar question, and we answered it similarly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I at that point, I was like, you know, I think these are going to die. I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, <laughs> and now, a year later, I, I don't know. They're everywhere. They're, they're not going useless. away. And I still don't see anybody using them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll give it I, – I will say they haven't gone away, but I don't think they've exploded either. Like, I noticed the, I get this shredded oh. lettuce because I'm too lazy to shred my own lettuce. Uh -huh. And there's a QR code on the back of the package. <laughs> really? Like, I don't well, care. Why? I don't want to know. I don't want to I think the biggest see thing shredded is, lettuce on my phone. Even for people who know what QR codes are. Mm -hmm. there's a mystery behind what are you going to get if I scan yeah. this? Am I going to get a domain name, a mm -hmm. website that I'm going to go to? Is it going to be information? Is it just going to be a sentence saying, hey, stupid, you scanned the QR code? I'll tell you the best use of QR code I okay. think I've personally seen. What and have maybe you, seen? You, have a, you have a good example. I have too. a really good one that I saw that just the other day. Okay, this was a while ago, and they're not making it anymore. Um, I'm really into craft beers, uh, oh. and I like Magic Hat. And they do all these kind of different seasonal flavors and one-offs. And they had one a while ago that usually they'll say, like, Magic Cat, and this is the flavor it is. It had nothing on the label. It was, like, all black and white and statically. But if you looked closely, it was actually a QR code. Oh. And you could scan it with your phone, and uh -huh. it would take you to a page where, you could, where A, described the flavor to you mm. so you knew what you are getting. And That's B, you cool. could vote on whether you liked the flavor. That's a neat idea. Um, so I thought that was a very clever use. I was uh, walking around Riverside the other day, and I saw a uh, QR code on a poster for a play that's coming up, uh -huh. and it took you directly to the ticket purchasing site. Oh, nice. That was flippin' brilliant. I loved that. Did uh, you buy tickets? And, but it actually said, scan this code to purchase a ticket. 
Oh, well, there you go. So it was like I knew what was going oh, okay. to happen. So you, all right. So they weren't so, just like, surprise. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. <laughs> you know, I expected, you know, if I saw a random QR code, oh, it's probably a website about whatever I'm reading. But no, this actually said, you know, scan here with your smartphone to purchase tickets. That's cool. Did you buy a ticket? I did not buy a ticket because it was 30 bucks, and I was, mm-hmm. wasn't sure if I wanted to go see that show. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to some people. Was it QR code the musical? <laughs> QR codes, QR codes. We love QR codes. You, oh, I'm so glad we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was a perfect and, – and the reason why I thought it was awesome is because it said what to do. Yeah. It said what this does, why you're scanning it. Because mm-hmm. like it, the one in particular I saw a while ago was this uh, kiosk in the mall that was empty. Right. And it was the the person who was selling these spaces. Mm-hmm. And it was a QR code. I was like, well, I'm going to check and see what it is. And it was just her information. Huh. I was like, well, that's cool. But – I don't know. It wasn't that exciting. Yeah, I'm like, now I have to call somebody <laughs> after I scan the QR code? Okay, well, yeah. fine. All right, so we got some more questions, but um, if somebody has a, a question, Tom, what do they do? Uh, you know, what, there's probably someone they, out there that can help them. Oh, how would they contact us? Oh, oh, us? Us, yeah. Us, yeah. Not saying that we can help them, because okay. uh, yeah, you could uh, call 1-888-972-9868. Or you can send us an email at questions at demonball.com. Okay, cool. All right, let's see what we have here. Uh, which one do you want to grab? Uh, How about Mary's question? Oh, yeah. I'll read I it. about that. Sure, yeah, okay. go for it. So Mary shot us an email. It said, hi, Ray or Tom. I guess, you know, we both don't have to answer it. Just one or the other. <laughs> um, it's Mary. Uh, I currently use a hotspot for my home Wi-Fi. Interesting. It gives me five gigabytes of data usage per month. I also have two laptops, one old, one new. I installed Hmm. the hotspot using the same settings for both computers. On the old computer, it works fine. I watch shows on Hulu quite a bit. Ooh, on a a Wi-Fi hotspot. I'm assuming we're talking about a... uh, She uh, must have a good connection. A cellular one, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, So she says she watches shows on Hulu quite a bit. On the new computer, it takes about one hour to reach the five gigabyte mark. I asked AT&T to help. Okay, so it definitely is AT&T... Hotspot that she's using, but they couldn't without me bringing everything to their store. I can't figure out what's going on. I saw your article in Folio and thought I'd ask you thoughts. Okay, cool. Yeah. What's the story here? Okay. Well, now, Mary, so- Mary's a friend of both of ours. I knew her from high school. You knew her from people, some from places and, and things. You yeah. Know, you know her. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, our. I think both our thought was initially, you know, something she's got something installed on this new laptop that is hogging bandwidth. Right. Um, one of I was surprised that she was able to download five gigabytes because it was a three G connection we were talking about, right? Uh, or was I it three know. or four G? I have no idea. Okay. Well, she doesn't say, but I was still surprised. Five yeah. gigabytes in an hour is pretty that's fast. Impressive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's impressive you can hit that <laughs> limit. Um, yeah. So my first thought was she has a program running in the background and it's eating all her bandwidth right. and. Um, there are a couple of uh, possible uh, suspects, you mm-hmm. know, that come to mind. One of them would be some sort of torrent client, BitTorrent client. Yeah. Now, for our listeners, a torrent client, how can we describe that? Um, it's typically used, I mean, we'll be honest, it's typically used to download software or video or yeah. or music that's pirated. Yeah. It's kind of like the old days of Napster, mm-hmm. except with Napster, it was all one centralized server. Right. In this where, you're downloading for everybody who is running the client right. who has a piece of whatever that file right. is you're going after. So if I want to illegally share some software, right. I would download a BitTorrent software and install it on my computer. And now I can share it with anyone else who mm-hmm. uses a torrent software. So she, so, I, I figured you know, maybe somebody else using her computer, like her boyfriend or something, had, had installed BitTorrent to download something and right. just never turned it off and it was running in the background. Um, I, we actually... Uh, communicated further with Mary, and that was not the case. Now, to be nice, uh, going back to BitTorrent uh, or Torrents uh, uh-huh. again, um, you know, they can be used legally. Yes. Uh, they can cer- you can certainly share things following the copyright law, but mm-hmm. often they're used for illegal purposes. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> not saying we'd say one way or another whether that should be the case, so, just informational purposes. Yeah. I'd asked her to look for that, and uh, she came back and said, no, that wasn't the problem. And then she, uh, she wrote us back just last week, uh, mm-hmm. 
and said that she discovered the problem. And the problem was Ooh. steam. Steam. Was she steam. leaving it in the bathroom? <laughs> no. I don't understand. Uh, steam is a uh, program that you can download for a PC. Oh. And it'll, it's basically the Xbox Live for PCs. Like, oh, okay. Uh, oh, Steam. Steam. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, it allows you to not a purchase worker. purchase games on the PC and and download them. Okay. And the thing is, <clears throat> uh, Steam is constantly in the background, um, it sort of intelligently updating itself. Oh. Um, if there's a game that you've got installed in your machine and there's a new patch out for it, or if Steam itself, the client itself, needs an update, uh, it will just kind of silently download those in the back. So even if you're not playing the game, Steam is usually... Uh, using up some bandwidth. Now, I'm surprised right. that it was using up that much bandwidth. Yeah. Um, but but uh, games can get pretty big, though. They can. I mean, um, they, Steam sells a lot of smaller games, too, though. Uh, which I are, mean, back in the old days when I played games, they came on DVDs and CDs. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, some of them are quite large, um, so it depends. Hmm. But, yeah, apparently uh, it's a real bandwidth hog. The good news is... Um, if Mary wants to continue to use the Steam client, you can actually set a uh, down a bandwidth limit on it. Okay. You can you can tell it you know this is the maximum speed you're allowed to download at, and that should keep it from blowing through your data cap in an hour. Well, I mean, this isn't really your question, but I think a better solution would be to get Wi-Fi, or I mean, to get uh, get a landline, get a landline, yeah. get, get cable or get DSL, because mm-hmm. uh, man, five gigs of data. If you're watching videos on Hulu. You can eat that up pretty fast. Yeah, I would think so. And especially if you're using Steam, and yeah, it's eating up your bandwidth. Uh, already. Another thing is, uh, <laughs> another thing is, you could, you know, if you have a BitTorrent client or you have the Steam client or something else that does a lot of downloading, mm-hmm. um, a lot of those are when you install them, they will install so that they run every time you start up your computer. True. And you might want to turn that option option off so that you can just fire it up when you need it and then close it out, and that way mm-hmm. you'll have control over when it's running, when it's downloading. Cool. Well, before we jump into another question, uh, I want to tell you, I forgot to tell you about this before. Um, this week, speaking of Wi-Fi and, and home service, uh-huh. um, my Wi-Fi went out at home. Ooh. And it, it had been a few days. And, uh, you know. I'm, that doesn't count as an, an emergency repair at your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Would it mine? Well, I don't want to call and talk on the phone. I mean, Comcast, they got, they got good yeah. customer service nowadays. Uh, they used to be really horrible, but they, they've gotten a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't want to wait on hold for an hour. And I tried. I, I waited for about a half hour. Um, I was sick one day this week, and I, I took off, and I was like, I just want to lay here and watch Doctor Who. <laughs> and the Wi-Fi was gone. So I was like, man. So, I, of course, being a you know, former network, you know, did network administration crap, mm-hmm. I checked everything. I took it all apart, you know, started everything over again. Went through all the stuff, finally gave up and was like, okay, the modem's gone. So I called Comcast finally and went through mm-hmm. all the same steps. <laughs> yeah. And I finally got a hold of somebody and they're like, yeah, your modem's dead. Because it was just blinking the US and DS, so it wasn't even making a connection. So uh, I was frustrated and uh, I went down to the service center mm-hmm. and I, um, I thought, you know, hey, I'm going to trade it, you know. They didn't have any modems. So. What? I was like, well, I guess I'm just turning it in now. They're like, well, we can send you one. And I was, I had just talked to Sean about this uh, uh, last week, and uh, I was like, you know, no, I'm just gonna buy one because I can. I got one on Amazon for 15 bucks, and I was uh, paying modem? for the modem. Yeah, really? Yeah, just 15 bucks. I mean, it was a used one because they're usually like 120 plus. Uh, they run uh, from what I saw. They run around 50 to 80 bucks. Huh. Now, ones with phone, the phone system in there too, those can run 120 okay. bucks. But we don't have the phone service. So, okay. Maybe. But yeah, so something to keep in mind, uh, you guys who are, are listening, uh, if you are renting, you can buy that mm-hmm. modem online, uh, Amazon, uh, a lot of different sites. And, you know, I was paying seven bucks a month for the rental. Yeah. I'm going to pay 15 bucks to own it. Yeah. I'm going to save myself a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. So if you can find a good deal like that, yeah. I mean, even still, even if you're paying fifty, a hundred bucks, even mm-hmm. you know, seven Assuming bucks a month adds up pretty quick. Stick with the service, uh, sure. for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're gonna change the AT and T next next month, then it's probably not gonna be worth it. Right. Well, that'd be that's not the brightest thing. But if you're stuck in a two year contract, something to consider. Yeah. So. Uh, but what? yeah, I am Wi-Fi-less at home. It's that's, really depressing. Oh gosh. Are you having to read books? 
No, uh, cable still works. I mean, so I can still get on-demand uh, Comcast God forbid stuff. I have to read books. <laughs> no, <laughs> books. It's so funny, though. Zoe, is, my daughter, is going crazy because she can't watch Netflix on the iPad or the Kindle mm-hmm. or, or the TV. And she's like, oh, Dad, can't you just fix it? I'm like, I, no, honey, I can't. I, I don't have a modem. When is it coming? <laughs> <laughs> it's really hilarious. So. That's funny. All right. Um, what else we got? We got any more I don't questions? Know. Do you, how how do they? What do they do if they need to ask us a question? Um, how does that work? Uh, well, they call one eight 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 nine seven two nine eight six eight or send us an email questions at demonbull dot com. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. We got one. I'll let you read it. It's from uh, Michael. Okay. Mike writes, guys, my iPhone out camera is foggy. The in camera is perfectly clear. How do I fix? How do I fix? Okay. How does he fix? So <laughs> from iPhone out, I'm thinking that he's talking about the uh, the back facing. Cam- uh, rear facing the, camera. Yeah. I'm moving away from my mic. The, the back facing camera. So that must be the one he's talking about out. And then in is the uh, front facing camera. Front facing, rear facing. Um, so he's saying it's foggy. Uh and I'm assuming you've already tried to wipe it off. Uh, that would be step one. So, Mike, that, that I mean, if, if you're going <clears> to <throat> clean your camera lens, what's the what's the procedure? Uh, a soft cloth. Okay. Um, you know, just and it's okay. A little discussed, bit of water. We talked uh, recently about uh, alcohol being damaging to the iPhone touchscreen, but that's yeah. not the case with the it's camera lens. It's fine on the camera lens. It's clear. It's glass or uh, sapphire on the yeah, new iPhone which five. Is even. Less um, likely so, to damage. Yeah, so. you're not gonna you're not gonna remove the oleophobic coating because there isn't one on the camera lens. Because um, you're, you're not you're, supposed to be touching it. Ideally, <laughs> you shouldn't be touching the camera <laughs> lens. Um, so yeah, take a little bit of, of water and wipe it off. Uh, use a little bit of soap, a little bit of mild soap if uh, you can't get it off. Um, otherwise, I'm thinking there must be something wrong with the hardware. Uh, mm. If if you've got an iPhone and it's cloudy. Uh, which I'm, I'm guessing it's you know foggy, cloudy. Like you've already tried to wipe it off and it's not coming off. I would go to the Apple Store because uh, that is not going to be something you're going to be able to fix unless you're you know into tearing apart your iPhone. Which I mean, iFixit's got great resources for that. Mm-hmm. If you really want to do that, uh, it takes a little bit of skill. I I won't do it until my iPhone is not my primary phone. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, you know, you might be able to take it apart and clean it then. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking you probably got some moisture in the phone. And that's, Which is bad. that's bad news because if that's what happened, Apple's not going to take care of it. They, they're they really notorious about if yeah. you get the phone wet, they won't fix it. So um, you might be tough out of luck. Uh, however, there are a bunch of places that do repairs on iPhones. Uh, there's a bunch in town here in Jacksonville. Um, and there's a bunch all over the place. Uh, check out our website, uh, deemable.com, and click on the business directory link and check on there for some uh, site that might do repair on your iPhone. But I would go to the Apple Store first because uh, mm-hmm. they will be able to diagnose it the best. Um, but I'm thinking that there's something wrong with the hardware. Uh, you, like I said, you probably got moisture in there. Mm-hmm. Now fix it. Got any more questions? Oh, let's see what we got here. You know, I know how people can call us and leave questions. How, how can they do that, Ray? They call 1-888-972-9868. Or you can send us an email at questions at deemable.com. That's D-E-E-M-A-B-L-E.com. <laughs> now, hey, I was going to mention this earlier, but I forgot to. So I'm going to mention it now. Um, could you tell someone about us? I mean, you got friends, I'm assuming. I mean, I don't know you. You might. You, you probably have friends. Most people uh, do. All our listeners are cool people and have many friends. Oh, I didn't know. I've, 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 I've met, you've I've met, met them? many of them. I've met some of them. I've met some of you people yeah. at, at One Spark. That we was did, awesome. and it was awesome, yeah. Um, but I don't know if those were podcast listeners. Those were radio listeners. Some of them were podcast listeners. And they they, were po- yeah, they yeah, all seemed popular true. and good looking. Oh, okay, cool. All, right. <laughs> all the ones that I met, they were they seemed very popular yeah, and good looking. Yeah. I was wondering why they listened to us, actually. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, tell somebody about us. Tell your friends. Tell your tell your mom. I mm-hmm. don't know. Tell your dad. Tell your aunt. Anybody who asks you questions that annoy you, tell them mm-hmm. to listen to us, and we'll help them out. Absolutely. Um, and uh, you know, and you, that's not just in person. You can tell them about us on Facebook, or like on Twitter. You know, tell them about us there, and uh, have them listen to us. You know, that'd be cool. Yeah. 
Again, that number to call is 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email at questions at dmble.com. Uh, we have another question. Let me let me read this one from okay. The Other Ray. The Other Ray. He says, hi, Ray and Tom. Sometimes the monitor fails to receive a signal when the computer wakes from sleep. Hmm. The screen remains blank. Sometimes there's a signal short, short, a single short beep. Sometimes beep. not. The internal hardware self-test and device manager beep. shows all devices working normally. Beep. Yes, like that. Thank <laughs> you. Rebooting the computer freeze <clears throat> fixes the problems. Any questions? And then he sent a, a fo- any suggestions? And he sent a follow-up email. He said, okay. "Do I need a separate video card for ordinary non-gaming computer use?" Maybe I could simply remove the optional video card, which only has 128 megabytes of memory. The mm. computer has six gigabytes. Perhaps the motherboard has enough memory for not for ordinary non-gaming video use. As I remember, there was a recall of NVIDIA GeForce 9300 GE cards years ago, which this computer has. But this card <laughs> did not qualify at this time. What, what the was that? was that? <laughs> was that you? No. I think it was you. Was it your fu- your computer? Oh, it was my computer. Oh. Yeah. Random noises being made. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, there was a recall, but it didn't. Qu- that card didn't qualify at the time. So he's saying uh, his monitor sometimes fails to receive a signal when the computer wakes from sleep. Hmm. Um, one of his ideas to fix this is to remove the standalone video card in the desktop and rely on the motherboard, presuming, of course, that the motherboard actually has a uh, video out. Not Many motherboards now have integrated video which yeah. means you don't have a separate card doohickey in there somewhere. I would say most. Yeah, most probably. Most, yeah. yeah. And in that Vast case, majority. they will have their... The, the way you'll be able to tell is uh, if you have two um, VGA, VGA or outs or HDMI outs on yeah. the back of your computer, then uh, you have two video cards, probably one standalone and one some other board. Or a simpler way to say it, if you have two places where you could plug your monitor in yes. on the back of your computer. Yes. Yeah. Those are VGA, yeah. DVI, and HDMI. If you only have one place, then don't remove that video card because you need it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm assuming that some, he, it sounds like he knows that there is an, uh, there are two, so yeah. he could remove one. Um, 128 megs of memory is pretty slim, even for a video card. Yeah, nowadays um, it is. Yeah. If he could buy his a few years ago, I'm sure it was, it was a so, nice amount then. So to explain this for our listeners, um, video cards... What video cards do is they process the information to present it on your screen. The more complicated the program you're running, the more uh, powerful a video card you need. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, if you are gaming, uh, you're you're doing very intense graphics. It needs a powerful graphics card to do that. Yeah. Uh, most of the cards that come built in on motherboards are not very powerful. Yeah, those are known as integrated they're, cards. They're weak. Uh, they usually have a small amount of of memory, which Kind of like m- memory on your mm-hmm. hard drive or your <laughs> mm-hmm. your memory on your computer. The more memory you have, the, the more well it runs. Uh, so if this is the issue, I would try, so, since you have two different video cards, see if it happens on the internal video card, if it does that, that beep that it was talking about. Um, and then you'll know that it is the video card that's the problem. Uh, if it still does it on the, on the internal video card, um, I don't know. I don't have a... I sort of feel like the monitor may be the problem here. Okay. That's my instinct. I have no strong rational basis for yeah. this. But just, I have seen this happen before, and it doesn't sound like a video card problem. Because when video cards go bad, they go bad. Like, mm. you will not be able to boot your computer up. Your computer will sit there beeping at you frantically, and that's all that will happen. That's true. <laughs> um, I haven't really ever seen a... a uh, video card go partially bad. The only thing I could say is make sure that the connection, the VGA connection where you plug the screen in, you know, is that seated firmly. Maybe that's coming loose. Maybe there's a pin bent in the connector. I think I know what it is. I what think you? you're wrong. No, you think I'm wrong? I think, I, I think you're wrong. And the reason why is because he says it doesn't have a problem when he reboots, but when he recovers from sleep, that's when he's having the problem. And I'll bet you that the primary video card is fighting with the secondary video card, and he needs to disable the primary video card. That's possible. And if that's and the case, Depending then, on what operating system you're running, it yeah. works differently. Y- he may need to actually do it through a uh, through the boot menu. Right. Uh, the CMOS. Yeah. So shoot us an email back and let us know what operating system you're running. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you know what motherboard you have. Um, no, that's that's uh, tricky. That one. is tricky. Um, 
But uh, if, if you're familiar enough, you can open up the case and look. Uh, see what motherboard you have. We might be able to walk you through that. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, when you when your computer's booting up, you'll see instructions that says press F1 to go into press settings. Press delete or something press right when it's booting up. It's yeah. very first booting up. Yeah, so you have to watch immediately when it starts up. And that will take you to the menu. Mm-hmm. If you're not familiar with getting in there, Yeah, if you're not familiar with the CMOS menu, maybe have a friend help yeah. who is. Because like, tech- that is a great place to really screw up your computer forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you can usually fix it, but yeah. it takes a while to figure it out. But otherwise, um, you can change it usually yeah. in the settings in the operating system too. Mm-hmm. So it depends on what operating system you're running. Um, but yeah, I. so here's what you need to do. Take, unplug your monitor, plug it into the internal one. Yeah. See if it still does that. If it still does that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> then it's and the monitor. Then it, it's the monitor or it could be the, no, it's it's the monitor. Yeah. Yeah, if it still does that, it's the monitor most likely. Um, if it doesn't do that, then you got to change a setting in mm-hmm. the, uh, w- which controls which video card. Yeah. You'd it's also try that. taking that monitor, if you have a second desktop or a laptop or something, taking that monitor and plugging it into a different computer and seeing if the monitor has a problem in that situation. That's so that will isolate the problem. You can find out if it's the monitor it, the monitor is going to continue to have the problem on another computer. But, you know, and, and same way, if you happen to have, and you probably don't, but if you happen to have a secondary, a second monitor, try plugging that into that the desktop. is exactly what I was going to say. So you want to isolate where the problem is. Is it in the monitor or is it in the desktop? I bet that beep has nothing to do with this. Yeah. I bet that's just a random beep that comes on when he starts it up. It's quite possible. So I would bet you that if you turn it on, uh, if, you, if you had two monitors plugged in, the other monitor would come on. Mm -hmm. because it's going to the primary. It's checking that monitor. Maybe you're right about the monitor being broke. could be that. Yeah. Uh, And it's not working correctly. So uh, there you go. Switch cables over to the other, the internal one, or plug in a separate monitor. See what happens. Let us know. Also, I have to say, most uh, modern video cards, going back to the subject of video cards, uh, we were talking about memory. Most modern video cards actually are able to share memory with the main memory of the system. Yeah, they can. Um, It's slower. Uh, but the point being that memory is not necessarily the bottleneck it might sound like. Just because yeah. it says 128 doesn't really mean that's the limit. Yeah. Um, and your integrated and memory, your integrated video card is almost guaranteed to be worse in any situation. Oh, sure. So. But, and, you know, if you're on, if you're not doing because, any video yeah. uh, gaming or mm-hmm. watching a lot of video, like, uh, like we were saying, like Hulu yeah. or, or DVDs on there. Or if you're doing video editing, that's oh, another place where you If you're doing you video need editing, you need a card. lot of RAM. That, yeah. That's very helpful. Uh, on the video card itself. That's, mm-hmm. It's weird. It's it's RAM on both, but one is on the motherboard, one is on the video card. Right. Um, you want the most you can get of both. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Uh, got any other questions? Uh, no, but if you... Uh, listeners do, you can give us a call at a certain phone number. It's one 972 9868 or questions at com. Tom, something happened at the NSA this week. The No Such Agency? No Such Agency. <laughs> do you want to talk about it? Yes, I do. Okay. Tell, uh, me, tell me more. Yeah. So, well, uh, hopefully folks have heard about it because it's really, it's been a top headline, at least when I go to Google News, which is sort of my source for news. Sure. Um, but yeah, uh, Starting on, I want to say Tuesday or Wednesday, The Guardian broke a story where somebody had leaked documents to them indicating, and the document was actually a court order mm-hmm. to Verizon, the phone company, um, basically saying turn over, I think it was 10 million uh, f- different phone number records. And right. the phone numbers were just average citizen type phone numbers. Right. You know, um, so it was this huge cache. And what they were turning over was metadata right and the difference between metadata and normal data like uh, metadata is data that describes data in this case that means they're turning over like the information about the call how long was the call who made it where did it go to you know when did it start when did it end yeah basically it was all the 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 raw data right the phone number that was called from the phone number called to the length of the call it doesn't include the call itself right so these people it wasn't like they were actually listening to the call right and I wish I could remember the source, but I actually read that they've had this information for landlines for mm-hmm. years, like oh, decades. Really? I did not know that. Yeah, they can they can pull those anytime they want them. Hmm. So that uh, um, you go ahead. You had All right. To say. So that was uh, that was sort of the first revelation, and, and and the court order really sounded like a thing that was like 
renewing their ability to do this. Right. Um, basically, the way it was set up implied that they are probably doing it with all the phone companies, not just Verizon. Right. And they probably do it every three months or how often they need to renew this court yeah. order to basically retrieve all the metadata on all the calls being made within right. the United States. Um, so that's an impressive amount of data. Then the next day, there was another document that was leaked. This time it was like a PowerPoint presentation. Oh. And this PowerPoint presentation talk, talked about a program called PRISM, P-R-I-S-M, which hmm. apparently they were partnering or something with uh, companies such as Google, Facebook, Microsoft, in order to get real-time access to their actual servers that store their data. Uh. Emails, Google Drive documents, uh, Skype that's I think that's why Microsoft is probably on the list. Okay. Um, and I did not hear about that. Yeah. So that was Prism, and um, mm. then there have been uh, some further revelations that they are also they have full access to credit card transactions now. Um, wow. Yeah. I haven't been following the story that closely. This is all coming huh. out. Basically, uh, the NSA is an agency responsible for you know basically sort of spy type data, and right. it looks like they that's are security. they have granted themselves access to volume, vast amounts of data of every kind, uh, basically about everything you do. Wow. And I got to admit, this story, uh, it bothers me a lot. Really? Yeah. Now, we, we talked about a little bit on Facebook uh, on our personal accounts. Um, but, you know, the first story, just the part about Verizon uh, and the numbers, honestly, I, I didn't care. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, so... Not a, not a big deal to me. Mm. Like, and it, um, it, it kind of, I just assumed they already knew they had that information. <laughs> that, yeah, that's funny. That's, I was talking with my sister and she's like, uh, I assume they already had that information. Yeah. And I was like, I assumed they were better than that. <laughs> I honestly assumed that they already had access to that information, but because it's the government, they probably weren't doing that good a job of processing the data mm -hmm. in any useful manner. <laughs> yeah, and that was sort of another, using two different right. stereotypes about the government. Yeah, they have they know everything, and they're not capable of doing anything. So <laughs> here's something scary that somebody's been pointing out. Uh, you remember a couple years ago when uh, Ken Jennings, the Jeopardy champion, was beaten by a computer? Yes, on Jeopardy. Uh, that computer's named Watson. Mm -hmm. Watson's an IBM creation, sure. and uh, the the Jeopardy match was actually just really a, a publicity stunt to bring in money so they could fund the Watson program. And what Watson was all about was taking huge reams of data and then making sense of it like a human would. Mm. Um, the government has, since that Jeopardy championship, been partnering, specifically the NSA and the CIA, have been partnering with IBM to develop uses for Watson. Uh now, okay. putting that together with the vast amounts of data they're collecting starts to get a little scary. Yeah, it's true. I mean, if they can actually do something with it. Yeah. But here's the thing that I've always, and, and I don't know, maybe I'm, uh, I, I don't know. I, I've never understood that fear. I've never understood the the fear of the privacy fear. A lot of people are, are concerned about their privacy. And, you know, we've talked about before, like uh, targeted advertising. Mm -hmm. I love targeted advertising. That's fantastic. I would rather have ads because I, I would prefer to give them permission, but mm -hmm. I'm going to give it freely. Go for it. Okay, whatever. Um, to, to track what I With do. Target advertising, you see the advertising on the screen. Well, this right. was a secret program. You didn't know they were doing this, so you could have yeah. no input into that process. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I wouldn't be excited about secret targeted advertising, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, honestly, I, I looked for a scooter uh, mm -hmm. a while back. And uh, from then on, every website that I went to, I would see ads for scooters. And I thought, well, that's weird. Well, it was Amazon doing targeting advertising. Mm -hmm. I searched for something on Amazon, and from then on, every time an Amazon ad was posted on a website, it would be about scooters. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of freaked me out until I was like, oh, well, I signed into Amazon, right. and I gave them that information, so now they're just trying to use it to sell me a scooter. So, but yeah, I mean, I guess uh, with it being the government, um, I, I'm just like, well, okay. So what? Yeah, I, I can't agree with that uh, that stance at all. Um, really? Yeah. All right. I mean, they're, they're I'm collecting sure you're so in much the information. Somebody, somebody pointed this out. They're like, they're not listening to your calls because the amount of information right. they have on you, 
they don't need to listen to your call. Mm. That's true because if you do effective data mining on these phone records, which probably includes your cell phone's locational data, and uh, you've got credit card data, you've got GPS data, you have all these websites you're going to, um, you know, and then you plug it into some, you know, program like Watson or something else, like it's going to be able to build a predictive profile of you sure. and what your day looks like and probably, you know, where you are at during, during for certain times of the day, who your friends are. I mean, what kind of information mm. does Facebook co- collate? Like Facebook knows this stuff. Sure. And they're getting really good at it. Um, well, now the government's plugging into Facebook, so they know what Facebook knows. Yeah. Um, they just can get a really global picture of your entire private life and guess, something that you did not volunteer to them. Yeah. And we just have seen these IRS scandals and revelations. Yeah. That. That's systems, been crazy. I, I'm not against the IRS uh, at all. Um, but, you know, there's bad people working in all kinds of organizations. Sure. Uh, they're always open to abuse. And my concern is not that, oh, the government wants to know what Tom Braun is doing at all times. I don't have a tinfoil hat. But my yeah. concern is that when, you know, that, that you know, wrong person makes that wrong decision and decides to abuse all this vast amount of power they have uh, with this information, um, that we won't know about it and there won't be anything we can do about it. Until something Until bad happens. Late. Yeah, that's true. Well, I can't speak to anything about the IRS situation uh, for full disclosure because I work for the IRS. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And now I've been outed. Um, uh, I don't get a lot have of anything. Calls. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have anything to do with uh, the fiasco that's been in the news, um, just to be clear. But uh, but I, I do work for the IRS in a completely unrelated role. Um I'm not an agent or anything. I, I do computer programming stuff. So, unfortunately, not in that division. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yikes. Yeah. Uh, they're having a ton of fun. Um, yeah. I uh, I mean, I assumed that to pull court records or to pull phone records, they had to get a warrant. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently they did. Uh, that was the other thing. I, I was. Yeah. But uh, they're getting a warrant, one warrant that says for the next three months you can have unlimited access to this data. Yeah. Instead of a warrant that says you can go and get Ray Hollister's records because right. we think he's a terrorist. I mean, I guess the the problem, the only problem that I really have, I, I understand your position. I, I'm not as concerned about it myself because whatever, take a look at my phone records. Great. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you're not going to find anything. I don't ever use my phone. So that's <laughs> maybe that's why I don't care about my phone records. Like, yeah, I called my mom and I called my mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. And but what if you're Amber. a journalist and you want to protect your sources or you're a lawyer and you well, want to protect your clients? Yeah, that's or certainly. Or you're a psychiatrist. You know, there's lots of people who have very legitimate reasons sure. that they don't want all their private information being monitored by the government. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think um, my train of thought just went chug a lugging down the road um don't remember what it was yeah and here's an here's an interesting perspective too we're thinking about this as americans and the government uh has come out and said yeah we're doing this stuff but we are strictly you know we accidentally may collect some information on americans but really this is targeted towards foreigners right and i'm like stop right there for a minute Okay, so imagine that uh, it came out that Toyota was embedding in every one of their cars a GPS tracking system, and the Japanese <laughs> government was tracking all the ca- all the Toyotas except the ones in Japan. And when this came to light, the Japanese was like, "Oh, oh don't worry, guys, we're only trapping tracking Japanese people." How fast do you think we would kick Toyota out of the U.S.? That's like, true. This yeah. compromises Google and Facebook and Microsoft and every company that's been named in, uh, you know, supposedly. And, and this gets a little foggy, I should mention, uh, since I don't know if you've been following the story. Mm. Um, all of these companies that were named in the PRISM thing uh-huh. deny that they're cooperating with the government. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But the government, it, it, it's weird because the, the companies strongly deny they're cooperating with the government. But these documents we have, the government apparently strongly thinks that they do, in fact, have access to this data. So somebody's getting their wires crossed there. Yeah. So there's wow. a little ambiguity there about what exactly is going on. But let's say for the sake of the argument that, in fact, uh, at some level, the government has been able to get full access to these server data, servers and their data. Mm-hmm. I mean, just imagine like in Europe, you know, you're using Google. Well, now you're going to be like, well, I'm not an American citizen. So apparently Google is, you know, giving the American government mm. the ability to read everything I do with no restrictions. I'm going to use something else now. You That's know? true. Wow. I'm got Facebook. I'm going to get off Facebook in a hurry. I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm not protected, hmm. you know. So even if you assume the protections for U.S. citizens, this is a huge problem for Google, for Facebook, for Microsoft, 
Um, and I can't remember for the, for other companies that have been implicated in this. Yeah. You know? uh, I remember what else. That, that, is, that is, does have serious implications. Um, and we do have some international listeners. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'd like to, to find out your opinions about this. Let us know. Yes. Uh, email us. Um, just shoot it to questions at com. Tell us what you think about this NSA situation. Um, the thing I was saying before um, was – I think the problem I have, I understand the position. I understand, you know, it, it making some people uncomfortable. Um, it's the vilification of the NSA mm-hmm. that I have a problem with. Um, I mean, they, they make a good villain in most movies that they're in. <laughs> but, you know, something that President Obama said was that, you know, the, this was approved by the court. Mm-hmm. You know, this was a court-granted a information. Secret court. A secret court, sure, but it's because it's, you know, secret information. Um, and some information does, I mean, I feel that some information mm-hmm. does need to be top secret. You oh, know, I agree with that. Um, but also, congressmen and senators knew about it. Mm-hmm. And from, um, correct me if I'm um, quoting him incorrectly, but he said that all the congressmen and senators knew about it. Mm-hmm. And they were, you know, briefed on it, and they knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. But now that well, the, the they were briefed on it, the question is if they understood what they were briefed on. That's fine. Yeah, I, and I understand that. But what what I have a problem with is now that the congressmen and senators are attacking NSA and mm-hmm. and oh, what are you doing? Well, you knew about it all the time. Yeah. Okay. So that you can't do that. You can't already know about something and and politicize it and say, oh well, you can't. That, that frustrates me. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple of uh, – there's two senators, and I'm, I'm pulling up their inf- the information right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ron Wyden from uh, Oregon and Mark Udall from yeah. Colorado, both Democrats. They've actually been uh, hinting at this for the past couple of years. Oh, okay. They've been saying uh, the, the legal uh, – Justification for what they're what the government's doing is a section of the Patriot Act and the yeah. Patriot Act revisions. Oh sure, and the government. And I got problems with the Patriot Act. Yeah, and these yeah. guys specifically have for the last couple of years been saying if people knew how the the government was interpreting the Patriot Act and what they were doing with that interpretation, they would be disturbed. So these guys were senators and restricted from saying talking about it, but mm. they couldn't come out you know and say it because they basically have the legal equivalent of non-disclosure disclosure clauses on them. Right. But they were kind of like, it's you know. It's top secret information. If they've yeah, been cleared like, for top secret. They then... were they were hinting that things weren't okay. Yeah. I've been reading a book uh, by Bruce Schneier, a well-known security, uh, internet security consultant. Mm-hmm. And this book, he is called uh, Liars and Outliers. And it's pretty good. Um, but one of the, he tr- talks a lot about what the pressures are on people in a society to cooperate or to not cooperate, what he calls defect. And two of the big pressures are uh, moral and reputational. Really? Like you are going to do the right thing or what society says is the right thing because uh, you have a sense of morality and because you have a reputation. And those are also effective on organizations. You know, a all company right. has moral pressure to not just, you know, scam its customers for all the money you can get. And has reputational. And that's really big for companies, actually, because uh, reputation can hurt a company more than it can hurt sure. an individual. Oh, yeah. Um, the problem to, that I see – like if you frame it like this, is when you have a secret agency being governed by a secret court um, under, well, not secret laws, but <laughs> <laughs> relatively, the whole thing is secret. There's no reputational pressure there at all that can be applied. And mm. assuming moral pressure on, well, you know, how moral do you think the CIA and the NSA are? Like different people are going to have different answers yeah. to that. But probably it's not going to be like, oh, yeah, they never do anything wrong. Um you know, so it's just there's no accountability. That's what really bothered me. Bothers me about this. Hmm. There is n- absolutely up until this point where these revelations are yeah. coming out, there has been no accountability. I think you know, should the government have access to phone logs? That's a that's a valid conversation to have. You can say yes, and there's good reasons. I could disagree, but you know, um, it should be a conversation that's out in the open. It yeah. shouldn't be we're going to hide this until somebody finds out, and then we'll explain to you why we think it's okay. I don't know. And, and the one thing that, that's come out is that this program, this specific program that they're talking about, has prevented terrorist acts. They say. They've, well, <laughs> well, sure. I mean, of course, they would say that if yeah. that's what the case is. Or they I would mean, say it if they just wanted to cover their butts. Well, I, I would think since this is being investigated further, it's probably going to be, if, if it wasn't said under oath, it will be said under oath, yeah. whether or not that's true. Uh, but, you know, Assuming for the sake of argument that this is correct, 
Uh, you know, this is prevent, has prevented terrorist acts. Mm-hmm. But and, not all terrorist acts. Well, of course, not all terrorist acts. That's impossible. You can't prevent all terrorist acts. Yeah. But this literally, this program has prevented terrorist acts. And so for me, that gives it validity and gives it, uh, uh, it that's why it should exist. But I, I think that, you know, we're talking about it should be out in the open Certain things, when you're investigating something, if you it's out in the open, it becomes not functional. It doesn't work mm-hmm. anymore mm-hmm. because now the terrorists know that their phone calls, there's going to be they they're being monitored. Yeah, but here's a question: You're a terrorist, let's say, not in real life, <laughs> not actually, but okay, <laughs> not actually a terrorist. Raise a terrorist. And uh, so he's doing bad things, and he's uh, justifiably a pretty paranoid fellow. He probably already assumes that they're doing this. He's going to assume the worst. He's going to assume his email's monitored, that his phone logs are being read, and his phone is being true. tracked. I don't think that's true. I, I, I mean, otherwise, why would it work? Maybe it worked a couple times. I mean, there was uh, like, there's some of these guys recently, like the, uh, the guy who's going to set off a bomb in Times Union Square at the FBI, basically. Uh, where they they really like set the whole thing up and kind of honey trapped him. I think we we cripple our law enforcement, or we try to cripple our law enforcement uh, by the with these you know privacy issues that you know we mm-hmm. we say oh well for the sake of privacy we we're not going to let them do that. And don't get me wrong, I, I I think that's why our constitution is the way it is, and we have the the Bill of Rights in there. But um, at the same time. I don't think it is a trade-off of security versus liberty. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we, we talked about that a little bit on Facebook, uh, and it's way too detailed to get into on here. Um, but, you know, that phrase is often misinterpreted in the context of that it actually was about. Yeah. It was actually about the liberty that he was talking about was the liberty of self, self-governance. Quote. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but Ben, you know the uh, quote. I don't really want to get into this yeah, too much because yeah. it's there, that I I don't hundred percent agree with your related. interpretation. <laughs> but the, okay, let's talk yeah. about the, the trade off between liberty and security. Let's just stick to that. Uh, well, yeah, um, th- th- that actually was about uh, self governance, not about personal liberty. Um, and yes, it, of course, through history, it's been reinterpreted. I think, but um, but yeah, I I don't, I don't think that there is as much of an issue of trading off liberty for security because what liberties are we losing? Well, we're losing the liberties to have a private life that can't be investigated by the government without just cause. Okay. So would you agree that you're going across a public uh, communication route when you make a phone call? Yes. Okay. But I also have a reasonable expectation of privacy while I make that phone call. Why is that? Because I have a reasonable expectation of privacy. I just do. Everybody does. If I go over to someone else's house, should I have a reasonable expectation of privacy, even though it's a public or no, a public place, I'm mm-hmm. trying to say. Should I have a reasonable expectation of privacy in a public place? Yeah. Historically, we've assumed when you make a phone call, somebody, unless the government has specifically gotten a court order about you, okay, um, and they're hard to get, that you can make your phone call privately. Hmm. I've never assumed that. I, I never had an expectation of privacy on a I think public. In that case, you're probably different from most people. I, I, might, I, I might be. I could might be, be wrong, but yeah. I think most people would be like, "Yeah, I am assuming that my phone calls, that my emails." Now we know that that expectation gets violated all the time, and not just by the government. You know, yeah. your employer at work. Like, if you're sending emails at work, incidentally, you do not have a reasonable expl- expectation of privacy. Do not send that private email that could get you into right. trouble because. Your IT guy monitors that server. Sure. Um, that's, that's, that's a case where somebody's mistaken about their, their right. expectation of privacy. But if you're sending an email from your home, okay, even if it's a, a Gmail email that's yeah. run by, owned by Google or a Hotmail, because you can't send emails without going through a company. Right. You know? So you kind of yeah. have to trust. At least an uh, internet service provider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really have to trust that, you know, um, you can send hmm. these privately and uh, – and and I expect that nobody's going to read it, you know. Yeah. So yeah. and again, that occasionally uh, gets violated, but this is like this is a violation of that on sort of a massive and ongoing and very secretive scale. Yeah. And it's by the government, and it's really uh, had no accountability up until this point. 
And uh, interestingly, the new story today is the whistleblower has outed himself. Oh. Which is pretty brave. Um, and apparently he uh, doesn't plan on coming back to the U.S. Um, and that's why he did it. Uh, is that the Edward Snowden? Yes. S- yeah. Snowden? Sno- I guess Snowden, Snowden would probably be Snowden. how you say it. Yeah. Um, he was an employee of a defense contractor. This is according to Guardian, the Guardian's website. Yes. Uh, employee of a defense contractor, Booz Allen Hamilton, uh, revealed himself to be the whistleblower behind the exposure of secret NSA surveillance programs. Huh. Yeah. Uh, Bradley Manning, uh, uh, you guys might be familiar with the name or you might not. Uh, he's mm. the whistleblower who uh, allegedly um, leaked the uh, State Department uh, memos and some other documents right. to WikiLeaks uh, a couple years ago. He's been in prison ever since, um, right. and they're just now getting to his trial, and you know he hasn't seen the light of day in a long time. And, and that's a case actually where I don't agree. Like I don't, I don't agree that Bradley Manning should have done that, but he's he's been in prison for a long time for it. Um, so you can kind of see why Snowden was like, I'm getting out of the country now. Yeah. Um, but in Snowden's case, I'm perhaps, you know, somewhat hypocritically, I'm more on his side because I feel like, no, this is morally something that's not going to hurt the U.S. The State Department documents, like, that that hurt us because, you know, there was a lot of, you know, privileged information about informants in there right. and, you know, people's stupid impressions uh, or slightly insulting impressions of foreign dignitaries and <laughs> stuff like that. That was the funniest part of the <laughs> Yeah, it was <laughs> funny, but like it, it hurt us. Like you don't yeah. want people to know that you sure. think the Saudi ambassador is a big idiot. Well, I think one of the biggest things with that leak too was that the, uh, the reporters that were killed yeah. in, the, in that attack, mm-hmm. um, that, that was also very uh, damning, if I can say that on the podcast, uh, for the government, you know, that that mm-hmm. had not, been released that information had not been yeah. released and it was only released so that, because that's of true there were some there was some information that that was probably good for the public to know in there as well um well, but this is sort of a thing where he's like you know this isn't gonna out any spies this isn't gonna like uh impair anybody this is something that the government really needs to be held accountable for and i agree with snowden on that hmm. well, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out uh this definitely won't go away no uh, in the short term and yet, depending on what country he goes to, uh, he might face extradition too. So. Uh, I think he's shooting for somewhere in Southeast Asia, so he should yeah. be okay. <laughs> I yeah, think he was Bang- interviewed in Hong Bangkok Kong. Bangkok or Hong Kong? To, yeah, the Guardian apparently interviewed him in Hong Kong. Okay, so. yeah. Uh, well, we do have some other news coming up next week uh, to take a more, a light, slightly more uh, fun turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, WWDC is coming up next week. Uh, oh, yeah? June 10th through the 14th. It's going to be at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. Uh, and WW- for those of you who don't, yes, go ahead. WWDC is the Worldwide Developers Conference for it, for Apple. Yes, uh, I just expect everyone to automatically know. <laughs> I mean, this is the big story. Not everybody's an i fan boy. Oh, okay, that's true. Uh, this is the big event every year that Apple does, where they generally it's for developers yeah. uh, to to learn about developing. But they for usually unveil Max. something, yeah, pretty big. Yeah, they usually do. I mean, the iPhone was revealed at at uh, WWDC, or no, no, it wasn't. It was revealed in January. I'm wrong. Uh, Which, several iterations okay. of the iPhone. Oh, the been original revealed. iPhone. Yeah, okay. that was not. It was actually in a January special keynote. Um, but other iterations of the iPhone have been announced at WWDC. They usually announce the newest version of the iOS operating system. Sure. Um, they also uh, usually release new information about the latest update to Mac OS. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they announce new Macs, new iPhone or new iPods, mm-hmm. uh, new iPads. So, Or uh, if they were coming out uh, with a new product entirely, do you think yeah. they would announce that there? For instance, there's the rumored watch. There's the iWatch, uh, a wearable basically like an iPod that'd be wearable and do other cool things like maybe monitor your pulse and mm-hmm. uh, monitor your running. So there's a lot of ideas about things that are coming out. Possibly the rumored ITV, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Apple television. Probably won't be called the ITV if they ever do come out with it um, because mm-hmm. there's a channel ITV. I was about to say, there is an ITV. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is, but yeah. there is. It's a TV station okay. in, in, in the UK. Um, so there's that. Uh, they're talking about possibly iOS 7 is going to be released, which that's it almost like a safe bet. It's yeah. a safe bet. <laughs> um, some of the rumors about iOS 7 are that it's going to be more flat, uh, which means that it's going to have flat. Yeah. 
the older versions of iOS have a lot of uh, skeuomorphism, uh, wood grain and mm-hmm. felt, uh, things oh, that look okay. like real world but aren't. Gotcha. Um, like the felt game board on, on the Game Center and uh, the wood grain shelves in book uh, iBooks. Um, mm-hmm. They are, are saying that that's going to go away hmm. because the guy that they fired last year, uh, I forgot his name. Um, he was all about that. And Johnny Ives, the designer, he's not very all yeah. about that. He hates those stuff. So, uh, we're expecting with iOS seven that it's going to be more flat, more, uh, uh, I don't know how to describe it. More, yeah, more well designed, more well designed. Yeah. It's going to look prettier. Uh, something that I read recently, Actually made a little more windows eight ish, ironically. Yeah. Ironically. That's true. <laughs> Hopefully it won't make me throw up. <laughs> Something that uh, they are also, some people are predicting, is that uh, iTunes might get revamped. And uh, an idea for that uh, the guys at iMore, Rene Ritchie, was talking about is on iOS, on the iPhone and, and iPad, there are seven different apps for what iTunes does on the desktop. Oh, yeah. And it'd be interesting if they split that up on the desktop. So you had a music app, you had a mm-hmm. movies app, you had a podcast app, and they were all different. Why wouldn't they go the other direction? Why wouldn't they create take those seven apps and combine them into one? Do you use iTunes? I do. It's so bloated. I, I think. I mean, I don't use half the stuff. That yeah, I, exactly. You know, you know, wouldn't it be great to just have a music app because that's really what you use it for, right? Sure. Um, a, a slimmer. It, it, it is super slow on the yeah. PC. That's but the I idea. sort of figured it was a that was a programming no, issue. It's not. It's a. Oh, it's not a. I thought you were going to say it was a PC issue. Um, a lot of people think, oh, it's a PC issue. It must yeah. run better on the Mac. It's it's worse on Mac. Oh, really? People say it's worse on Mac. So, oh, wow. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting if they split it up and you know made it more streamlined. Mm-hmm. Smaller apps that were more streamlined. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Or, yeah. or maybe they could get rid of iTunes altogether and just replace it with the cloud. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. That's sort of a Google. They got iCloud got going, going on. Yeah, that's what that's what Google's got. Uh, so who knows? Uh, they could do anything. Some people are predicting the iPad Mini is going to get a Retina screen. No. I don't see that happening. Yeah, it just takes too much battery life. Mm-hmm. It, it would eat up the battery on an iPad Mini uh, to have it a Retina screen. So do you think we'll we see. are due for an iPhone six or an iPhone five S? Oh, that's always the rumor. Uh, I think they're going to stick with the October schedule. Yeah, I think they're going to wait till October for that one. Yeah, because it just makes more sense because you can sell more at Christmas. Yeah, and we haven't heard a lot of rumors in that regard yet. And usually the rumor mill starts cranking up. uh, I would guess the next one's going to be an iPhone 5S. Yeah, Uh, but that's just a wild guess. That's just no nothing behind that at all. Um, But yeah, so that's next week, uh, the 10th through the 14th. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. We might write some articles about it if there's yeah. something exciting. So if we don't write anything on com, then it's nothing happened. Or we're lazy. You can trust us. We, we, are our num- we should be your number one and only news source. <laughs> no, I wouldn't no, do that. Because no. uh, there's also times where amazing stuff happens and we just don't write about it. Because <laughs> no one's paying us to. So That's right. All right. Well, I, if we haven't bored them to tears yet and they're still listening, uh, I think that's all the time we got for today. Mm-hmm. Yep. So thanks for all your questions. Keep them coming. Uh, you know the number. It's one eight 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 nine seven two nine eight six eight, and Or you can send us an email at questions at com. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the show. Subscribe. Search for Deemable Tech on iTunes. That, that bloated uh, software we were talking about before. <laughs> <laughs> Open right. it up and search for Deemable Tech. Or you can point your favorite podcast app to dmbl.co slash pod. Thanks for listening. Our producer is Sean Birch. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Demobile Tech. Thanks for listening and have a great week. Mm-hmm.